I've changed the premise of this video so many times while writing it, because this movie is so jarring. I'll spend ages talking about the movie's obvious flaws, and then think back to a certain scene, and for a second, the movie seems to excuse itself of its own shortcomings. I've seen your name a handful of times now, and I can't deny the movie has captured me. Now, whether that's because of my fascination with the movie's critical reception, or if your name is really doing something special, to me, it's not a movie that is clearly good or clearly bad. I have definite gripes with certain parts of the movies, but there are also scenes that I really, really like. And in this video, I've kind of become fascinated with the spectacle of your name. So I want to spend this video looking into the movie. I want to find out not only why I was captured by it, but also why the larger community has so universally praised your name. How has this Makoto Shinkai movie captured the anime community? I'm going to firstly look at the opening of the film to see how it initially grabs our attention. The first scene opens with our main character waking up in the morning before school. What the movie does here is it almost starts the movie slightly after the story starts. The movie references events from a previous day that we haven't seen yet. This is to put us in the same situation as our character Mitsuha, but also creates that initial spark of mystery in the story, and that's very important this early on. We're told about an approaching comet. The movie gives the comet supernatural connotations, but it does it in a very subtle way, hinting about these connotations rather than telling us about them. This and Mitsuha's reaction to her memory loss of yesterday is normalising the fantasy elements of the film. Instead of Mitsuha reacting with traditional shock or awe, she reacts confused and brushes these moments off as normal. This is important for later in the film. This is continued in the next scene where Mitsuha goes to school. Literally the first thing we see here, the teacher's board is packed with information. As the mystery of the day before continues, we get a shot of these three phrases written on the board. The first is dusk, and then the witching hour, and finally Tasukari. These are massive clues to the story, and if you catch them, work as brilliant foreshadowing. The movie revolves around the idea of dreaming and magical happenings during the night. The phrase dusk here sets the time, and then the witching hour is another phrase for the time midnight, usually used in supernatural stories where the sun going down triggers supernatural changes like werewolves. And finally, tasukari, which the teacher translates as who's that in the gloom. It's an old Japanese phrase that was used long ago at dusk. It was used to ask who someone was when it was too dark to see them. We then get a full shot of the board where an old Japanese poem is written out. Please don't ask me who's that in the gloom. I'm waiting here for my love in the September Jew. Now that's the English translation by the way, but it's a lovely poem and you can imagine how it would sound in its native language. You can see how this all beautifully foreshadows that upcoming narrative. It's actually a shame it wasn't given more of a focus. This isn't delivered as a voiceover by a wise old man or anything, it's just background noise from a lesson in school. Once again, normalising fantasy. There's a final nice bit of foreshadowing here as the teacher calls on Mitsuha for not listening. Mitsuha stands up and the teacher says, Oh, so do you remember your name today? This is a reminder of what happened yesterday and a hint towards the importance of remembering names in your name. It's a nice little moment. We then have a conversation with the three friends outside. Tessie jokingly suggests that Mitsuha is a part of a multiverse from his comic. A complicated theory about endless dimensions that could be relevant to this story, but it's a bit too far-fetched for this video. So far in the movie, we've been subtly introduced to various mechanics of your name. We know this is a supernatural story, and there's a strong level of mystery already established in the film before it even gets started. The next few scenes in the movie finish the first segment of the story, but they're ones I'm not too fond of. They forget the subtle storytelling of previous scenes and opt for a voiceover explanation, spelling out plot points to us about Mitsuha's father and their family tradition. Plot points that become throwaways later on in the film. It's a shame because the film really wasted valuable time here. Take a note of the pacing, this is 17 minutes into the movie, which is only roughly 100 minutes long not including the credits, so this is a fifth of the movie's runtime spent achieving very little progression. It's given us some hints and set the tone quite nicely, but it's taken a long time to do so. It's up to you whether the slow pacing helps the effectiveness of faster paced sections later on in the film, or wastes valuable time that was sorely needed towards the end of the film. So the next part of the story, the next 10 minutes or so, is where your name really establishes its premise. We begin with our main character Mitsuha seemingly waking up in a boy's body, just after boldly wishing she could leave her village. This is all brushed off as a dream and Mitsuha doesn't take it seriously at all. 
once again normalising the fantasy. She then lives out a day as a boy in Tokyo. What I like about this section is how huge and busy Tokyo feels. I can assure you it wouldn't have worked as well if we hadn't spent so much time in the country first. Mitsuha's entrance to the bustling streets of Tokyo feel like, once again, a really nice contrast. This section is essential for feeling that initial sense of mystery. We now have something to connect the dots with these supernatural undertones. And then, almost 30 minutes into the movie, the premise is revealed. Mitsuha is swapping bodies with a boy in Tokyo. Tacky. I think it could have come quicker. I don't think 30 minutes of build up to a twist that is pretty obvious was necessary, but time isn't something very wisely used in your name. Regardless, the story is flowing nicely now and there's a lot of payoff. The slow start makes this section of the movie feel fast and vibrant. This is the end of the first act, and the movie once again feels the need to have a voiceover explanation of what's happened. I think these hurt the flow of the movie and don't really respect the viewer's ability to follow the story. We then have a huge tone shift for the next segment, a part of the movie that's probably one of my favourites. While in Mitsuha's body, Taki is taken to a shrine to make an offering by Mitsuha's grandmother. This is one of the first scenes where the movie's supernatural side is put in the forefront. There's a lot of talk about intertwined timelines in different worlds, but mystery shrouds the supernatural part of the story. Nothing is properly explained, but we're given a rough idea. I'll leave it up to you to decide whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Personally, there's no logical mechanics behind anything in your name. It all seems to be powered by spirits and God, so leaving it vague might be for the best. And would explaining some complex system even benefit the movie? I'm not too sure. Shinkai and his team change up the movie's visual style completely for this location. What was before lots of highly detailed, tight compositions is now one massive open location with very few fine details. This is echoed into the change in composition design as well. Before each shot was very square, with lines creating most of the structure, now everything is very spherical. We have this great round crater with a circular stream in the middle. Even the lakes in the background are circular. I think this nicely reflects the movie's switch into a higher plane. We're considering gods and multiple worlds here, the idea of time being endless and complex. I think the change of visual style is jaunting, but effective in forcing us into this new mindset. The scene following this is one of my favourite moments in the film. As they're returning to the village, Mitsuha's little sister mentions the phrase half-light, which immediately sends us back to the classroom poem scene from the beginning. With these few shots, the movie brings to life the poem from earlier. Both characters are waiting for their love in the September dew. And it's one of the movie's most subtle but brilliant moments, followed by an equally effective one. The scene is cut drastically as Taki switches back to his own body with tears streaming down his face. I love the scene because just as the movie is building itself up to a romantic climax, we're abruptly snatched back to reality and suddenly we realise how far away the characters are from each other. It creates such a great contrast in emotion, a brutally sharp but powerful moment. This is where the movie starts to introduce a conflict and steers away from the trajectory of its happy ending. Mitsuha and Taki are disconnected, they can no longer switch bodies. The story is now out of the character's hands and Mitsuha and Taki are helplessly moving away from each other. A number of really great shots echo this split here, and as this first plot twist still ripples through the world of your name, we're hit with the second plot twist, an even more devastating one that completely turns the story on its head. We find that the characters are living years apart, in different timelines. A complete change in tone takes place because of from the light-hearted romantic sub-stories to a now seemingly impossible situation. This fast-paced right hook is what I think creates so much of the movie's emotion. If this was stretched out and delivered equally throughout the story, I don't think it would have been as effective. After this, Taki's memories of Mitsuha start to fade uncontrollably, and he forgets what he was looking for in the first place. I don't know why the idea of forgetting each other was so moving. In a way, them forgetting each other is worse than them being in different timelines. I think this echoes the fleeting nature of time in life, that important things can quickly and uncontrollably fade away from you. This aspect of the story really captured me and is definitely one of the main reasons I found it so powerful. So now I want to take a look at the final third of the film. 
where Taki needs to go back in time to save Itamori to save Mitsuha. And obviously he needs to try and save the whole town as well for a dramatic effect. The scene is kind of odd. The pacing and narrative style feel different from the rest of the movie. It kind of rushes through a quick scheme the kids make up to evacuate the town, and with very little reasoning behind anything. It just seems to happen, and before we're even shown everyone evacuating, the comet hits and the scene ends. The whole scene clocking in at just under 10 minutes. After this, Your Name decides to skip 8 years into the future, where Taki is working in Tokyo. Again, the film opts to explain things to us with a dialogue voiceover. We're told that the town evacuated with most people surviving unharmed. A movie's worth of supernatural build-up concluded with a mere few minutes. Narratives like Mitsuha's father were completely forgotten and left unresolved. It's like the comet destroyed half of the plot too. Both Taki and Mitsuha forget the body swapping ever happened and continue their lives with only a vague sense that they've forgotten something. Which gives the final section of the movie a melancholic undertone. And finally, the massive payoff point, the scene that every second of the movie is building towards, Taki and Mitsuha finally meeting in real life, just kind of happens. The interaction is about 10 seconds long and the movie just ends. Makoto Shinkai has talked about the film since release, and has admitted that it's incomplete. He blames budget and scheduling issues, saying that two years just wasn't enough to fully realise your name. And I agree, the final third of the movie feels missing. But would I say the lacklustre ending completely ruined the movie for me? No. It didn't make the rest of the movie void. I just felt like I hadn't watched a proper ending, a feeling of emptiness towards the movie's finale, but the rest of my Your Name experience felt somewhat intact. And the ending didn't seem to phase everyone. I think Shinkai managed to scrape together enough of a conclusion to please most fans. So if not a theatrical ending, what was it about Your Name that captured the community? I think it boils down to the sheer scale of the movie. Even the smallest details of the world were brought to life with such elegance. Shinkai refined every inch of this movie to make it feel huge. The breathtaking landscape shots of Tokyo, for example, give an extra layer of importance and weight to the story. It's hard to think what this film would be without the barrage of sublime imagery. This idea of a colossal production for what is at its core a simple love story is a tremendous mixture. It makes every moment of the story that little bit more important. I think it's important to remember as well that Your Name has been mainly a theatrical release. It wasn't available to stream online or to buy on Blu-ray for months. Going to the theatre was the only way to see it, adding to the spectacle, and over here in the West we've only really been having theatrical releases of anime films outside of giants like Ghibli for about a decade. 10, 20 years ago, a movie like Your Name would get maybe one or two showings at an indie cinema, but only if you were lucky. Your Name's release is one of the first of its kind in the West, and I think fans want to be a part of that. You haven't just watched Your Name online, you've been a part of the release, you've contributed to the record books, you're part of history. I feel like on top of the movie's story, Your Name is one of the first anime theatrical releases that Western audiences can truly be a part of, and I think that is how Your Name captured the anime community. But what do you think? Why has your name gained such popularity and such amazing critical reception? Please post your thoughts in the comments for discussion. And if you enjoyed this video, please do click the like button, please do share it around. And if you haven't already, please do click the subscribe button. I've got a lot more videos coming up very soon.